Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be putting back on an on-chain analysis hat and discussing transaction fees. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. If you're not familiar with transaction fees in this chart, we're just looking at the USD value of all fees paid to miners, transaction validators, stakers, and or block producers that day. And this chart, you know, it, it used to be more useful than it is today, but it does still, I think, provide value. One of the interesting things is that historically, whenever transaction fees spike, it has been representative of a significant high, right? You can see that that happened back in 2017. It happened over here in April of 2021 both of which ended up being significant highs. Now, in 2021, we ended up going and putting in a higher high later that year, about six months later or so. Now, what's interesting is we saw a spike back in May, and I remember making a video on it back then. And what I also remember is I remember saying, look, guys, transaction fees have spiked, and everyone just saying, well, it's because of ordinals. And I'm not saying that's not true. I mean, it is true, right? I mean, it's not, you know, the, the mania that we had in, in, in April or May of 2023 was nowhere near what it was in 2021 and, and 2017. But one of the things we said back then was that it could at least be a leading into a cool off period where this could be a local top. And what's interesting is, is it actually occurred, if you look at the nature of transaction fees, right? Like, so if you look at, at this one in 2017, it spiked after the top was in. And then if you look at 2021, right, the spike occurred after the high was in. And then if you look at March or May, the spike occurred after the high was in. And then if you go look at it today, there was a spike coming just after this potential high. Now, it's hard to know if this is, you know, the high for a while or not. I mean, you know, there's all sorts of reasons to believe it could be or it could not be. But the point is, if you only looked at this chart in a vacuum and you had no clue about, you know, maybe the reason why transaction fees are spiking, you know, paint, you know, sort of just pointing to ordinals. Um, if you had no reason, no narrative to go along with it, if you only showed me this chart, right, it shows that oftentimes there is a cool off period. Now, a lot of people would point out that while it did cool off here in May of 2023, we were back to putting in new yearly highs by July, right? I mean, so, so what, right? But it at least did signal that there needed to be a cool off period. Now, again, there's the halving in April and there's the whole spot ETF stuff that could be coming finally to fruition, at least a decision within the next few weeks. So it's hard to know if we're going to get a move into that or not or if the market will just front run it completely and everyone's waiting for something that's not actually going to happen um, in terms of price movements associated with positive news. But the point is that, you know, we are looking at transaction fees spiking. And the only way that this, I mean, it could be a false signal. The other thing is that it, you know, perhaps the high on transaction fees isn't in, right? And then it, and then it theoretically could go higher. I mean, it's already gone a lot higher than it went in 2021. So who's to say it couldn't continue to go higher from here and, and you know, just continue this trend. Um, so that's sort of caveat too. But I did just want to bring this chart to your attention. There's certainly a lot of uh, a lot of charts out there that you can look at to sort of paint a more bullish picture. And a lot of people have done that. But I do want to, you know, talk about all the different charts. And, and at least this one is saying, hey, you know, there could there, there might need to be a cool off period here sometime in the next few weeks. And if, if Bitcoin does push higher into the end of the year, it doesn't necessarily negate this. It could just mean that it's, you know, being delayed by, you know, uh, another two to three weeks. But it is historically transaction fees spiking like this are a signal that at least a few, you know, within a couple of months, it normally comes back down to earth, right? Not always immediately. And even again, and even in 2021, six months later, there was another high. But historically, after, you know, a, a couple of months after these peaks, the market has has at least experienced some type of significant cool off period during that window. And, and you know, there is a 
a period coming up, I think relatively soon, early early to mid January, about mid January, is often a a sort of a, a unfavorable time for risk assets in election years. Um, so do keep that in mind. So there are some signals that the market is getting overheated, um, and and we'll see. You know, we'll see if it if 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 there's a push higher by Bitcoin or not going into the end of the year. The S and P continues to go up. I did just want to put this video out and say, look, this has this has been a good warning sign before, um, and there have been times where the market did go just a little bit higher, even after it topped. But in all cases, there was at least a, even if a, a very brief one, there was always a cool off period sometime after the spike in transaction fees. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Links in the description below. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.